Okay, so WWDC happened. iOS 14 is official and I've been using the beta since then and I'm happy to report that it's not as bad as you might think. No, like seriously, none of the apps that I use have any major breakdowns and for the most part, they just work like before. Okay, so while it is stable, yes, but polished? No, there are a few rough edges around here. So should you go ahead and download the beta on your phone? Basically, if you're the type of person who doesn't mind an occasional crash or someone who doesn't need to get work done on the phone, I'd say go ahead and download it. But if your iPhone is important to you, maybe hold out for a bit. Also, while battery life is tough to gauge these days, I haven't noticed much difference. I'd say pretty minor, if at all. Okay, enough talk about stability. Let's just look at what's new with iOS 14. The very first thing you'll notice is the space between the dock and apps on home screen. Like it's really huge and honestly, doesn't feel very natural. Removing the notch for a second does make it a bit better. I think we'll know about that pretty soon in September. Also, you can now do this to quickly scroll through pages. But that's not really necessary now that you can disable pages altogether. So you can have just one page for the home screen and have all your other apps in the library. Okay, so this is very different from anything we've seen before. And I like the idea of it. First of all, everything you see here is done automatically and you basically have no control over it. You cannot create these folders or move apps between them. It kind of does everything for you. And that's fine for me personally, as long as it does it right. Your most used apps are right here for quick access and you can go inside the folder if you need something else. I'm mostly okay with the folders here, but one thing that irks me is that not only the position of the apps keeps on changing, but also the location of these folders. The more you use something, it rises up towards the top, which makes sense, but kind of messes up with the muscle memory. And then I have to take a good look to find what I'm looking for. And trust me, it's not a good place to find stuff. The good news, that doesn't happen very often. And most of the times it manages to show me what I'm looking for. Okay, the other big thing with the home screen is you can have these redesigned widgets on there. And my impression so far is it's nice, but not very useful. They come in three different sizes and you can create stacks of them by placing one over the other. And there's also this feature to have them switch automatically to show you what are things you need at the time. Looking at these widgets on my home screen, they do remind me of live tiles from Windows Phone back in the day. But these are also good, not great, but good. See, these do look good in my opinion. They display some info, and that is nice for certain things, but you cannot interact with them just yet. Widgets were something that I thought I would use a ton, but actually, I just have the weather one here. The last thing about the home screen is that all these features are not on by default, but optional, and you could totally use your iPhone like you do now, and nothing changes if you don't want it to. Alright, we have the new widgets, new app library, but the biggest and the most significant change to iOS is that calls now don't take up your entire screen. You can silence a call by swiping up or accept or decline right from up there. And what's even better is that video calls now work in picture in picture. Picture in picture also works with videos. Play a video in Safari and it will keep on playing even after you exit the app. You can hide it, resize it and dismiss when done. Siri also got a compact UI, but here you cannot interact with the screen while Siri is active, which kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. So yeah, a lot more things now don't take over your entire screen, but there's room for improvement. Okay, so Apple always likes to talk about privacy at their events, but this year they've made some significant updates with iOS 14. First up is privacy indicators. You get this small dot in the status bar whenever the microphone or camera is active, and it even shows you the app that used it recently in Control Center. It's a big peace of mind update that I think a lot many people will appreciate. And now you also get this alert every time an app uses the clipboard. So you can check on apps that snoop over your data. And yes, there are more prompts that come up when you first open an app. One of the new ones include access to network devices. 
Also, you get new options with several prompts, like when granting location access to an app. You can choose to share only the approximate location or let an app access only the photos that you select. I like where they're going with this and I'm sure there's more to come in the future. Okay, these were the big new features that I think define iOS 14. But like always, there are a number of smaller improvements. Messages got a bunch of updates with more powerful group chats. There's a new translate app that I think is going to come in handy. Safari now translates foreign websites for you and gives a privacy report. Apple Music got some updates and I already made a video on that. And emoji search is nice. So there you have it. There's a lot more fixing stuff than new stuff in iOS 14. But it's also a pretty major redesign of the home screen in some ways. iOS 14 is available as a public beta right now. And the official release will be in September. And yes, there's a separate video coming on iPadOS 14 as well. So subscribe if you'd like to see that. And yeah, I'll see you then.